Almighty God, we thank you this morning. Oh, you're such a wonderful God that you care so much about us, that you have good plans for us, that even this morning you have given us an opportunity to wake up and see this day. We thank you so much. As we come to you to hear your word, we pray that God, the Holy Spirit, is going to speak to us, is going to enlighten to us, so that we may hear and understand your word. We love you, and we pray this trusting the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. I want to thank God for this wonderful opportunity that he has given us, each one of us who is watching, to be able to see this day. We also know we cannot take anything for granted because we are living in times which are very difficult and also dangerous. There are those who are in hospital. There are those who are at home who are sick. There are those who are not feeling well and having symptoms. And they may not be enjoying this particular time. But I want to tell you this morning that God cares about you. That God loves you. That God has not forgotten you. So may God help us as we listen to his word this morning. My name is Godfrey Chege. And I thank God for uh, saving me and giving me an opportunity to share his word this morning. This morning, our word will come from various texts, and we will go through quickly one text to another. But the theme of our reading, our, our sermon today is the power of the cross. Because as you have started the Holy Week, which will be celebrated the whole of this week, We'll be seeing a lot of things about the cross. And there's power in the cross. But before I start, I want us to remember three plans that every human being passes through. There's one, the plan of God. The plan of God. And the plan of God is listed very well in Jeremiah 29. declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope that is the plan God has for each one of us for each and every human being God has that plan and that plan is so well documented in the Bible and I pray that each and every one of us we will remember that that for I know the plans I have for you. And declares the Lord. It is not me declaring. No. It is the Lord who is declaring. That I have good plans for you. But I also want you to see. The other plans that other people may have. If you look at John. John 10.10. 10, once again. There is a thief or the devil. John 10, 10 says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. The plans of the evil one, the plans of the devil is to steal, to kill, and destroy. And the plans of the devil, you can see it everywhere. Where you see killing, where you see death, where you see destruction, that's the plan of the devil. And Jesus continues saying on the same verse that I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Once again, you see the plan of God that Jesus came so that you can have life and have it abundantly. Let me also look at let me also look at Two other places in the Bible which tells us about plans and we start with Genesis Genesis chapter 37 verse 18 and 20 Genesis chapter 37 18 and 20 let's see together they saw him from afar and before he came near to them they conspired to kill him they said to one another, 
here comes the dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of those pits. Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him. And we will see what will happen or what becomes to his dreams. These are the plans of Joseph's brother. When they saw Joseph coming, their plans was to kill him. Just as we read on John 10.10. Their plans was to kill him, to destroy him, so that his dreams will get finished. So they said, here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him. Those are the plans of the evil one. Those are the plans of brothers. of the people gathered in palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and brought it together in order to arrest Jesus by self and kill him. Once again you can see the high priests the elders of the people when they saw what Jesus was doing they started planning to kill him and they said very well here that let us plan let us brought together so that we can kill him. Once again, the three plans. The plans of men was evil to kill Jesus. But I thank God because the plans of God will always be good. If you look at what happened to Joseph, when Joseph was planned to be killed, but he was not killed, and he was sold to Egypt, later he was a savior of his brothers in Egypt. When there was a huge famine, Joseph became the Savior. The same case is happening with Jesus. When they were brought in to kill Jesus, they thought they would kill Jesus and, call his, and kill his ministry. But that was not the case. When they killed Jesus, when Jesus was crucified, we were able to see the power of the cross. Bless be to God. I thank God because God has got good plans for each one of us. Even at these difficult times, you know when you have this COVID, people are asking what is going to happen about us. Let me remind you that God has a good plan for us. He has not even forgotten one minute that there is COVID. No, he still sees far beyond the COVID. He knows there's a good plan for you to sustain you. The cross which Jesus suffered is the cross which has power even to defeat COVID. And I thank God because us as Christians, if we believe that, if you believe that, we will be able to see the Savior of the Lord. Our court worship came from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. Let me read it again. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, on the tree. The fact that Jesus carried our sins on the cross is a very important thing for all Christians to remember. And then it goes that, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Then it continues and says, by his wounds you have been healed. When you're talking about corona or COVID, we are talking about healing. And that healing was already purchased for at the cross. When the high priests were planning to kill Jesus, they didn't know that they were purchasing for us a hit. When the soldiers were beating Jesus, wounding him, they didn't know that by doing what they were doing, they purchased for us the healing. If you are unwell at home, if you are unwell in hospital, if you are worried, let me remind you this morning 
that Jesus paid it all. He didn't pay partially. No, he paid it all. And he didn't pay it for a day. He paid it for eternity. All that we need to do ourselves is to believe in him. I thank God when he says, I have good plans for you. Even when you're going through difficult times, I want you to remember that. God is saying, I have good plans for you. I thank God what he says in the Bible. He said that my word is true. My word will go and do what it's supposed to do. That's what it says in the book of um, Isaiah 55. That my word will not go out in vain. It will not come back to me without doing what it's supposed to do. So when Jesus says that, I have good plans for you, that by my wounds you are healed, it means that all that you are going through, God is going to heal us. When you look at the preparation of Jesus as he was being taken from, from uh, as he was preparing for the Passover, and when I was going through this chapter, Matthew, 20, Matthew 26, I really enjoyed a few things in that chapter. And I just want to share with you one or two places where I felt the Holy Spirit of God speaking to us. The first one of them is uh, Matthew 26, verse, verse 6. From verse 6, if you go down up to verse 13, there was a lady called Mary. And she came with a very expensive perfume. And she poured and anointed Jesus. Let me just go through it quickly. Now, when Jesus was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an arabash flask of very expensive ointment. And she poured it to his head as he reclined at the table. Mary, through the Holy Spirit, realized that Jesus was going to die. At one point, she didn't know what she was doing. So she took the expensive perfume and she oint, uh, uh, anointed Jesus. The disciples, when they looked at it, they said, why are you wasting so much of this uh, expensive perfume? But Jesus in verse 10 says this, but Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for the body. The disciples have been told by Jesus several times that Jesus is going to die. And it was now coming closer. And he, Jesus says in verse 13, Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, her name will be mentioned. As as Christians, we have an opportunity every single day to work or to give for Jesus. Every single day. If you look around for opportunities, which Jesus or God provides to you to do something about his body, they are enormous and there are many. And then if you go down there, you find now the preparation of the Passover. The Passover, when it was prepared, when it was getting closer, the disciples asked Jesus, where do we prepare the Passover? And Jesus said, Go to the village, and there you will find a man, and tell him you want to use his house. And that man will give you the house. Once again, we see somebody, this man, who gave up his house, so that the work of God can be done in his home. Then if you go down there, you see a very important occasion which happened this time. The institution of the Lord's Supper. Previously, we never heard about uh, the Lord's Supper. But this time, the Lord's Supper started there. Let's read verse 26. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread. And after bless, blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat this, it's my body. And he took a cup. And when he had given that thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sin. Every time you see the forgiveness of sin, you must remember the cross. When Jesus was being crucified, it was for the, for the give forgiveness of, of, of sins. And he told his disciples, take this wine, drink, it is a reminder for you. 
And then as he said, I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of wine until the day comes when I drink it in the new kingdom. I thank God because the plans which God has, it is almost impossible for us to see. The disciples of Jesus had been with Jesus for a long time. And Jesus at times says, somebody is going to deny him. And Peter said, I will not deny you. I will even die for you. Then Jesus said, one of you will, will betray me. And each one of us said, I will not betray you and be, not betray you. But I want you to see another plan of the evil about, about uh, uh, Judas. Judas had plans in his might to betray Jesus. All along, he was preparing to betray Jesus. And he left the disciples. He went to the high priest and he said, pay me some money. Give me some money and I'll betray him. And the betrayal of Jesus, there are some words which Jesus said about the betrayal by, Je by Judas. He said that it was better if this man was not born. It was better if Judas was not born. And at times I was thinking about it and I found it very painful that Jesus says it was better if this man was not born. And I want to ask each one of us as Christians, whatever we do, Whatever we are, let us not betray Jesus. Let us not betray Jesus by our action. Let us not betray Jesus by our sayings. Let us not betray Jesus. Because, as it were, at times it might, it might have been better if we were not born. So may God renew our thinking about the plans that he has for us. At times we wonder what is going to happen tomorrow next year. But I want to remind you this morning that the, the, our Lord has good plans for you. That as he goes the cross and dies there and is wounded, his plans are good for you. His plans are forever good for you. And God is a God. He does not change. Circumstances might change. Environment might change, but God will remain as God. You know the love of God is immeasurable. You cannot measure it. When Adam fell into sin, God started planning how to redeem him. It took a long time, yes, but God knew I will still redeem this man. Even as this morning, God has got that plan for each one of us, and he knows how he's going to do it. Our law is to trust him. Our law is to believe in him. Our law is to celebrate him. If we do that, his plans will be accomplished. Uh, the, the, as I come to the end, I want to thank you all that God has been so gracious to us that even this morning you can hear his word. That even this morning the seed of his word can come into your heart. And when that seed comes to you, you can do something about it. Jesus said, there are four ways that a seed which is planted will, will, will grow. The first seed, or the word of God, when it falls on a, lock, on, a, on a lucky ground, it is picked by a bird and it goes. The other one, it will go on a shallow soil. It will start to grow and then wither. The other one will grow on thorns. It will not grow. But there is one seed that will always deliver the seed which goes into a fertile soil. And I pray God that you and me, we are fertile soils where the word of God will have, time, or have place and it will grow. So as we think about the cross, there's power in the cross. God is willing to do everything for us, to help us, to save us. He will not leave us alone. I like where he says that what I'm telling you is true. If it were not so, I would have told you. What God is saying is true and it will remain true. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the good plans that you have for us. 
You have said the plans that you have for us, they are for good and not for evil. And we thank you, God, because we know even this morning, you have good plans for us. When Jesus came, there was a purpose. The plan was to redeem us. And that plan was fulfilled at Calvary. This morning we accept the blood of Jesus and we pray that our words, our thoughts, our body will be washed by that blood and will be acceptable to you. You are such a word of God. We love you and we pray this trusting in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you be blessed as you think about the plans God has for you. And as you celebrate Easter, remember, God has got good plans for you. Amen. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Elder Godfrey Chege, for the word. And I want to believe that we are real blessed by that word. Particularly so at such a time as this, when we are looking forward to Easter, I believe that uh, that word will continue to find a place in our hearts and that we will continue to cherish it so that we can continue to bear fruit in our lives. Uh, it's time now for uh, worshipping God through giving uh, in terms of offerings and also tithes. And I believe uh, for all of us, uh, even those who are at home, uh, we can see our pay bill number there. Uh, scrolling in our screens. So kindly use it uh, for tithes, uh, for offerings also. And I believe that the Lord God will bless us. I just want to welcome uh, the worship team just for uh, a number as we worship God through giving uh, in preparation to uh, end the service. And as they just give us that number, we can be worshiping God through our givings, through our tithes, through our offerings, as we uh, join together with our praise team, as we give. And I believe that the Lord God will continue to bless us and to bless you, even as we look forward for a great week ahead, even as we look forward for his gracious hand upon our lives, worship team. Crucify Shall we pray? Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful to you this morning for your word. We want to thank you, Lord, even for giving us an opportunity to give. Father God Almighty, we are grateful that you've given us businesses, that you've given us jobs. We are grateful, our Father, that you've continued to provide to our every need in accordance to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord, even for the offerings. We want to thank you, Father, even for the tithes that we've given this morning. We want to pray, our Father, that you will continue to bless us and even to bless the work of our hands in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
We want to give you praise. We want to give you glory. We want to give you honor and adoration. May you be exalted. May you be glorified. May you be magnified, our Father. In Jesus' name, do we pray and give thanks. Amen. So may the Lord God bless us. May the Lord God bless each one of us. Um, Sami, Mina, and I want to thank God for that uh, entire service that we've had. Thank you so much for uh, our team, uh, the online team here. We want to bless the Lord, even for each one of us that has taken part in the service. May we continue to trust in the Lord. May you continue to look up to him, even for the uh, great week that is ahead of us. And even as we uh, enter into the next service, we want to trust that the Lord God will continue to bless us and to be together with us. The Lord God bless you. The Lord God be together with you. Have a fruitful week and have a blessed day in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us in this service. We hope that you have been blessed. Keep connected with us through our various online platforms. That is Facebook at PCA St. Ninians Livestream and YouTube at PCA St. Ninians. Thank you for joining us in this service. We hope that you have been blessed. Keep connected with us through our various online platforms. That is Facebook at PCA St. Ninians Livestream and YouTube at PCA St. Ninians.